Now, brothers and sisters, we're going to begin a series, three-part series, the title, I Will Build My Church. And in this lesson, this series of teachings, we're going to discover the purpose and the significance for speaking in tongues and prophecy. How many know that these are means by which the Lord is building his church, that he is growing up his church? Are you listening? You, you must understand that this is not a work man can do. Amen. It's not a work man can do. <clears throat> There's a lot of confusion today around speaking in other tongues and there's a counterfeit in the land. And that's why it's so important for God's people to understand the genuine, the real, and the purpose of it. We need to understand that God is not the author of confusion. In his house, there is to be order. Everything is to be done decently and in order. And you'll find in this series of teachings, there was a purpose for speaking in other tongues and prophecy. Amen. Now, Jesus says, I will build my church, and the result of that will be the Gates of hell should not prevail against it. Amen. There is a lot of confusion today surrounding the topic of tongues. There are many that are teaching against it. And then there are those that have a counterfeit. There's even witches, warlocks. There's those that are demon-possessed that speak with other tongues. That's why it's so important for us to understand the purpose of speaking in other tongues. So before we can get into the tongues and the prophecy, we need to start out with the foundation. And that's exactly what Jesus Christ is talking about in the verses we're looking at here. We're going to begin our lesson with. In Matthew chapter 16. <clears throat> beginning with verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say thou art John the Baptist. Some say you're Elias or Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He saith unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered 
and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. But my Father, which is in heaven. And now we're coming to the, the text of this whole series. And I say unto thee, that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for your help. We thank you for sending to us the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of truth, to lead and guide us into all truth. We thank you, Father, for keeping us on course. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to help your people, for giving us clarity and understanding around such a controversial subject, so much confusion around this subject, Father. We pray, Lord, you help us to bring clarity, understanding to your people. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Now, Jesus was not telling Peter that he's the rock. That's what they teach in the Catholic Church. That the current Pope and all the Popes are successions of Peter. And that they have the keys to the kingdom. That they have this authority on the earth that nobody else has. That's what the Catholic Church believes. And they're working with the charismatics, the latter rain movement. It's called dominionism. But that's not what Jesus Christ was saying to Simon Peter. He was saying to him, you are part of the rock. You'll never be the rock Jesus is the rock. But you can be a stone. You can be a living stone built up in the church, in the temple of God. And that's what this whole series is about. Jesus said, I will build my church. Now, Peter is not the chief cornerstone of this building, right? Jesus is. Scripture says, lest the Lord builds the house, they that labor, labor in vain to build it. There's a lot of vain building going on today. But the result of Jesus Christ building his church is that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. You know, in a lot of ways today, we're seeing the kingdom of darkness. We're seeing the gates of hell prevailing against the church. But Jesus said, it shall not prevail. That means there's coming a time where he is going to build up the church to the degree that Satan will no longer be able to prevail against it. We're seeing the church today being overcome to some degree. Can you say that the church today has the power, that they have the victory, they have the joy, even the measure of what they had at 
in, in the book of Acts? I don't see a triumphant church on the, on the earth today. I do see some wise virgins going to sleep. That don't sound triumphant to me. Amen. That might offend you if you're one of those that have the opinion that the church is just waiting to be raptured. You tell me how the church is just getting ready to be raptured when the church is going to sleep. When the church is not ready for rapture. In fact, the Bible says it's lukewarm. And it's going to be spewed out into the tribulation hour. So tell me how the church today is overcoming. Now, there is a remnant within the church that is overcoming. Amen. And we see in the book of Revelation that Satan and his angels, the dragon and his angels, are not going to prevail against the remnant that's in the church, that's being birthed. But as the church as a whole, there'll be a time when the gates of hell shall no longer prevail against the church. That's what Jesus said. How is the Lord building his church? What's the purpose of speaking in other tongues and prophecy and all the other gifts for that matter? But what's the purpose The purpose is to build, to edify, build up his church, to make the the church victorious. But how does he do that? How does he do that? Go to John chapter 2, verse 19 with me. Jesus answered and he said unto them, speaking to the Jews, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Now, they're thinking very carnally. They're not, they're not spiritually minded. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple in building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? The last thing they're thinking of is his body. Right? The, the last thing that they're thinking is something spiritual. But he spake of the temple of his body. Now, if the Lord is going to build up the temple of his body, he said he's going to do it in three days. Listen. We understand that's talking about the resurrection. If the the body of Christ today is his people that have been filled with the Holy Spirit, how is he going to build up his body? He's telling us right here. It's going to be by the resurrection power. How many know that's what came on the day of Pentecost? That same spirit that rose Christ from the dead. Right? If he dwells in you, he shall quicken your mortal bodies. That quickening. That quickening has to do with the building up of his church. Are you listening? Romans chapter 14, verse 19. Let us therefore follow after the things which make for peace. And things wherewith one may edify another. That word edify means to build up. You see that that is the, that's the constant theme. A building up and edifying. 
Are you listening? And this is all done by the Spirit. That same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead. <clears throat> First Corinthians chapter 14, verse 12. Even so ye, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the what? To the edifying of the church. What did Jesus say? I will build my church. Seek that you may excel to the building up of the church. I may know that this series of teachings is not for babes. Amen. This is strong meat today. Wherefore, let him that speaketh in an unknown tongue pray that he may interpret. Does that sound like what you see in the charismatic churches today? As we dive deeper here, you're going to find that it's more profitable to, to prophesy than it is to speak in other tongues. They work together. For if I pray, listen, Paul says, if I pray in an unknown tongue, my spirit prayeth, but my understanding is unfruitful. If you're praying in tongues, and it's the real tongues, the genuine, you're not going to understand what you're saying when you speak in other tongues. Unless God reveals it to you. Are you listening? What is it then? I will pray with the Spirit, and I will pray with understanding also. Do you see what he's saying? Paul is not interested in gaga gugu, spiritually, speaking in tongues, gaga gugu. There's a purpose for speaking in other tongues. Are you listening? It's a communication, people. It says the Spirit prays. The Spirit is speaking. But is unfruitful in understanding. If God does not give you understanding, now sometimes he won't. And then sometimes somebody else will interpret it. But it's always to the edifying of the church. Can you say amen? So Paul makes it very clear that, that those that speak in other tongues that it would be more profitable if they get understanding. Else when thou shalt bless with the Spirit, how shall he that occupieth the room of the unlearned, how shall they say amen at thy giving of thanks, seeing he understandeth not what thou sayest? Paul was dealing with those that were very immature 
And there were obviously those that were speaking in other tongues that was in the flesh. And it was bringing a lot of confusion. He's trying to help them to understand the purpose, the significance of speaking in other tongues. There's a reason, there's a purpose. He said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. It's very serious, isn't it? For thou verily givest thanks well, but the other is not edified. If you're speaking in other tongues, Paul says, okay, you're being edified, but those around you aren't. How are the others being edified? How many know a feeling's not enough? We need understanding. God is a spirit, people. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. If God is communicating with you and I on this earth, he's a spirit. That tells me our spirit is to commune with his spirit. This is not something done in the flesh, obviously. This is not carnal. There's a communication going on between our spirit and God's spirit. And oftentimes we have no understanding of what is being said in the spirit. Are you listening? That doesn't mean God can't give us understanding. In fact, Paul said, pray for it. I don't think the church today takes this very serious. Because speaking in other tongues, brothers and sisters, without question, is a secret weapon in the church. It's a weapon against Satan. It's something the devil doesn't understand. It's a com communication between us and God in the spirit that the devil doesn't understand. You understand what this brother's telling you? Years ago, my pastor was listening to the radio, and he got ready to turn the radio off. And the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, leave it on. And the program that came on the radio was about subliminal messages. And he was listening to what they were saying about subliminal messages. How a subliminal message is a communication to your subconscious, not your conscious. It bypasses the conscious. It goes to the subconscious. And that's why they use it in advertising. To trick you. To program you to buy their product. And it's used in even rock music and everything else. But while he was listening to this, the Spirit of God spoke to him and said, this is the reason I gave tongues to the church. To bypass the conscious man. How many know the conscious man is very prejudiced? I often look at speaking in other tongues almost like a baby with a rattle. To keep that baby content. To keep that flesh content. Out of the way. While the spirit communes with our spirit. Are you listening? Hopefully, by the end of this series, you, you will be speaking in other tongues, not because some man taught you, or because you got activated like the charismatics. No, but because if you're already filled with the Holy Spirit, you won't be afraid to let God be God. How many know you don't activate tongues? 
When I, when I experience speaking in other tongues, it's from the overflow. It's from the overflow of worship. I never speak in other tongues if I'm empty or if I am not overflowing. In other words, as I'm filled with the Spirit, I experience speaking in other tongues. So it behooves us, brothers and sisters, to stay filled with the Spirit and to stay overflowing. So that we're constantly, like, like Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. You come to that place where you're operating in that secret weapon and you're open communication with God, your spirit communing with his spirit. God is revealing revelations to you. Remember, Paul said, I'll come to many revelations. Now. There's been times in the past where I would speak in other tongues, even as I'm ministering on the broadcast, and then I would give the interpretation to it. But I've got to the place also now where I don't need to speak in other tongues, where I just let the Lord speak, prophesy. As already mentioned, speaking in other tongues, how many know speaking in other tongues is not for the believer, it's a sign to the unbeliever. God doesn't want you and I coming together and everybody speaking in tongues at the same time like you see in a charismatic church. That's just confusion. Are you listening? If somebody speaks in other tongues during the service and it's done decently and in in order, usually the minister has enough of God and self-control to let the Holy Spirit lead. And many times the pastor will give the interpretation to that tongue. And it's all done for the purpose of developing, growing, learning, edifying, and building up the church. It's not baby food. Are you listening, people? Even though I already mentioned that many times when a babe in Christ is filled with the Spirit, tongues is like a rattle for them. As they're speaking in other tongues, their spirit is growing. Their spirit is being edified, growing in the Lord. They're communing direct with God while that natural conscious man is being occupied or being uh, distracted, really. Amen. Preoccupied, I should say. Now listen to what Paul says in verse 18. I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all. Remember, Paul said, I come to many revelations. Now listen, this is so important, the next verse. Yet in the church... I had rather speak five words with my understanding that by my voice I might teach others also than 10,000 words in an unknown Now, what do the charismatics do with that? They don't want to hear that. Five words that I understand. Brothers and sisters, that's why you don't hear Brother Joseph speaking in other tongues all the time. And if you've been listening for the last five so years, 
You might have heard me a few times. Why? Be led by the Spirit. Because Paul said, I'd rather speak five words with my understanding. Paul's saying, I would rather teach you something. There's no benefit in me speaking in other tongues in your presence. If there's no interpretation. Do you see, brothers and sisters, the purpose of tongues? Do you see it? It's to build up the church. It's to edify the church. Now listen to verse 26, 1 Corinthians 14. How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, a doctrine, a tongue, a revelation, an interpretation? Let all things be done unto edifying. See, you go to a charismatic church today or the latter rain movement. It's total confusion. Everybody's doing their own thing. I mean, you may have the whole place speaking in other tongues at the same time. Everybody, in fact, I've been in these meetings where everybody comes to bring something. Everybody's ready to give something. That is not biblical. We're not supposed to come to gather together to give something from the Spirit. First and foremost, we're coming to gather together, right, to receive from him. But this gets way out of hand when everybody thinks they're, they are the minister. And that's what the charismatics are doing today. Making everybody come together as though there is no order in the house of God. You know what they're finding out, though? These leaders of these charismatic church, it doesn't work. Even though they want to rebel against the word of God and do it their own way. A lot of these ministers are bitter because they were in a church where they were not allowed to do that. And so when they get to be pastors and and leaders of charismatic churches, that's the first thing they want to do is let their congregation do what they wanted to do and their pastor wouldn't let them. It's nothing but rebellion people. And they find out really quick. Well, they were right. It doesn't work. Are you listening? I mean, I've heard some real out out there things from people that have a chance to share a revelation, a vision, a dream. It's just a time waster. Just takes up a bunch of time. It's nonsense, most of it, if not all of it. Very little is really the Holy Spirit. If if any at all is done to the edifying, the building up of the church. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most, by three. And that by course, and let one interpret. And he goes on to say, this is so you can, everybody can learn. But it's still being done indecently in an order. It's not done where it's just out of control. 
there is learning that needs to take place. We don't all just know right off the bat how to speak in tongues and how to interpret. And all. These, this is a learning process. But it's not an opportunity for people to come together in just a free-for-all. Everybody just does their own thing. It should be done decently and in order. And unless there's a true shepherd in, oh, that's leading and that's overseeing that church, that congregation, it's going to get out of order real quick. Are you listening? But it is all to be handled in love. Even the rebuke, even chastening, whatever, it all must be done in love. Are you listening, people? Remember, it's about building up and edifying the church. That's what it's about. Now, let's get to the real meat of this message. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 11. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. For what reason? For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the what? Of the body of Christ. What's that word edifying mean? The building up. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the building up of the body of Christ. Why did God give these offices? the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, and the pastors and teachers. Why? For the building up, the edifying of the body of Christ. Amen. Not for their own self gain. Not to feed their own belly. Amen. Amen. Not to live in mansions and fly in lair jets. Hello. This is the purpose of the ministry. Right here. For the perfecting of the saints. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come into the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. Now listen to what Paul goes on to say in verse 14. That we henceforth be no more children. He's talking about growing up. He's talking about growing up. He's talking about development. Children are tossed to and fro. Carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slate of men, the cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive. But. Speaking the truth in love. Speaking the truth in love. May grow up. That's what edifying is. That's what building up is. That's what Jesus meant when he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things, 
which is the head, even Christ. Are you listening, people? Oh, it gets better. It gets better. Listen to this. From whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part maketh intercession or excuse me maketh increase of the body unto the edifying there it is again of itself in love. Did you hear that, people? This is Jesus building his church. This is how it's supposed to work. That the increase, the increase comes from the Spirit. And the body edifies itself in love. Are you listening? As the spirit of God fills his body, the body edifies itself in love. Amen. You don't have to prod and cheerlead and beg the true body of Christ. Amen. It edifies itself in love. But those that have not been baptized into the body, the babes, the children that have yet to be baptized into the body, of Christ by the Spirit. Oh, you gotta cheerlead them. You gotta pull on their arms. You gotta drag them. Amen. Gotta beg them. Because they don't know what to do. They don't know their place. They don't know their position. But those that are filled with the Spirit, that are in the body of Christ, How many know the word church means called out? There's a difference between the body of Christ and the church. A lot of people don't know that. You're not in the body of Christ until you're baptized in the spirit. When you're filled with the spirit, that's when you're in the body. The majority today of the church are not in the body of Christ. They're not part of the body of Christ. How many know the body of Christ works with the head of Christ? Hmm? His body doesn't do its own thing. It's his body. But you have those today that are called out of the world. They're in the church. And the Lord wants to build them up to where, like he said to Peter, you are part of the rock. You're not the rock. You're you're a living stone. It's part of the building. Many in the church today have not even begun to be part of the building yet. He says, you're yet carnal. I can't speak it unto you as unto spiritual. Are you listening, people? Most of the church today are carnally minded. They don't understand spiritual things. They don't understand that God is building a temple, a living temple where his presence is going to dwell with his people. Most don't understand that today. That's what Jesus was talking about when he said, I go away to prepare a place for you. Are you listening? Praise the Lord. Jude chapter 1 verse 20. But ye beloved. 
building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Building up yourselves on your most holy faith. How? Praying in the Holy Ghost. Now that could be speaking in other tongues. I've experienced many times when my spirit man is built up, edified when I speak in other tongues as I'm praying. As the spirit is giving me the utterance. Now, I think this is a good place to end the first segment of this series. <clears throat> and when we come back to the second part, we'll begin with this verse, Jude chapter 1, verse 20. We need to understand, brothers and sisters, the purpose and the significance of speaking in other tongues. Before we can even understand about tongues, speaking in other tongues, and prophecy, we need to understand why. He gave it to the church. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you.